right. So guys, um, we're going to go ahead and balance this wheel and tire assembly using this uh, Hoffman Geodyna 7100. This is a pretty basic wheel balancer. Um, fairly straightforward to use. Um, you'll move on from these to some of the more difficult machines to use, things like the Hunter Road Force machines and whatnot. But we're going to start you on this because it is fairly simple to use. So to turn the machine on, there's a switch on the back. Turn it on, wait for it to boot up. You'll know it's booted, you'll hear three beeps. And it does take a second. All right, so now we're booted up. We can go ahead and put this wheel on the machine. So the first thing we need to do is find a cone that fits the pilot on this. That will do. So this can be done a couple of different ways. I'm gonna put the cone in the back this time around. You can cone from the front as well. So we're going to place a cone on the machine, a wing nut, I'm going to place the wheel and tire assembly on the machine. Now this is a very heavy wheel and tire assembly, it's off of a 2011 Tahoe. If you're not very big, this is going to be very difficult for you to pick up. So I'm going to show you an easy way to do this. If you want to move over that way with the camera so they can see what I'm going to do here. So <clears throat> this thing weighs about 70 pounds, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll the wheel up about where I want it. I'm going to put my right foot underneath the tire. I'm going to use my right leg as a ramp. I'm simply going to grab the wheel, roll it up my leg, and then walk my wheel and tire assembly onto the machine. Now this particular clamp has a quick release. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on, pull that quick release, and slide it down, then release the quick release, and finish tight tightening this wing nut. We want to go all the way down until this is nice and snug. Okay, the next thing we need to do is take our wheel measurements. There are three different measurements we're going to need to take. We've got back spacing, wheel diameter, and wheel width. So for my back spacing, we'll bring this out, place it on the wheel, you're going to hear it beep, and it automatically takes the measurements for me. So you'll see it's a 17 inch wheel. This says it's six and a half inches uh, in width. We're going to find out in a minute. And this has a 93 millimeters for back spacing, give or take. That says 89, good enough for government work. Let's check our width here. So we'll use our caliper. This said it was six and a half. I have the feeling it's wider than that. Yeah, it's seven and a half. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to increase this width to seven and a half. It is a 17 inch wheel, and I am going to change this from 89 to 93, which is what I measured it as. So now I've got 93 millimeters of back spacing there, 17 inches in diameter, seven and a half inches in width. Actually, you know what? This particular machine I don't think is measuring back spacing. It's simply measuring the distance from the machine to the wheel. Some of them measure back spacing. This one appears as though it's just measuring the distance. <clears throat> so we've got all our measurements in, 93, 17, seven and a half. If you weren't sure what your rim diameter was, it's on the tire size. This is a P265 70R17. Those last two digits, that's our rim diameter in inches. So we've got all our measurements in. All we need to do is shut the hood. It's going to spin the wheel up. So as you can see, this is what's one and three quarter ounces on the inside of the wheel and a quarter ounce on the outside of the wheel. So we're going to open our hood. We're going to rotate our wheel and tire assembly. You're going to notice that these LEDs go three, two, one, green. My weight is going to go at exactly 12 o'clock on this inside bead lift. We'll grab some weights. So here's our one and three quarter ounce. This particular one is a steel weight. Keep in mind in New York State we can't install lead weights. They can either be zinc or steel. Generally the easiest way to do is do this is stand on the side opposite from where you're putting the weights on so you can look straight down and line this weight up. I want to make sure that that's still green. Line my weight up. Hammer your weight on. We'll take our quarter ounce. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to roll this around until that green LED illuminates.
Get my wheel weight hammer. Place my weight at 12 o'clock. Hammer it on. Now, assuming this is all done correctly, I'm going to close the hood, spin this back up, and these should read zero. Good. Now, what happens if they don't? So let's suppose we put weights on. Let's suppose we put our weights on, but we don't get this on quite right. So when we spin this up, let's suppose it doesn't say zero. What I don't want to do is add another three quarter ounces of weight. If this doesn't come up zero, remove the weight you just installed. Spin the assembly back up. And then reinstall your wheel weight. You shouldn't have to keep adding weights. If you do, something is wrong. So again, green lights illuminate. 12 o'clock. Pound our weight on. Close our hood. and zeros. That's what we want to see. When we're done, we're simply going to loosen our wing nut. And again, on this machine, it's got a quick wing nut. You just pull that trigger, slide your wing nut off, remove your wheel and tire assembly from the machine. Always remove your centering cones. Don't leave them on the arbor. And that's the job. Have a good one, guys.